Hello, welcome to another lecture for English 2090. So what I want to do today is discuss Roger Corman, who's considered to be the Pope of pop cinema. And you'll hear that kind of uh, uh, tagline for him a lot. Now, even though he's not the director of Death Race 2000, he is the producer. And he's very important when we look at independent cinema, especially American independent cinema. So he has various companies over the years that he owned right to get away from the Hollywood system. There's Film Group. There's American International Pictures. You'll probably recognize, have you ever seen any kind of B-movie from the 60s, 70s, 80s, even um, even 50s? Um, you'll, he's part of it. He's either producing it or directing it and so forth. If you ever watched Fanguli on MeTV, a lot of his films are on there. Allied Artists, New World Pictures, uh, especially anyone in the 80s or into 80s cinema, you'd recognize the New World Pictures, and then Millennium Films, and of course, New Horizons today. So he's always tried in various stages to remain independent and out completely out of the Hollywood system. He subverted a lot of ideas that the Hollywood system made, and he himself really partook in a lot of kind of film theory that's over the years, and we'll discuss the auteur theory uh, in another lecture, but he really worked to kind of fight against the Hollywood system. Now, he would give speaking parts to a lot of different actors, even if they were just one line, and the reason why is this would help actors join the Screen Actors Guild. So even if it was just a random extra, you know, if they really had a passion, if they really were interested and being an actor, and if he saw, you know, them trying even just as extras, he would just kind of have himself or the writer give a line so that they could actually join the Screen Actor Guilds, which would make them, of course, um, a little bit more marketable in Hollywood. Now, he would also allow actors to write and direct, depending on their career ambitions as well. So he really cultivated a very close-knit family working outside of the Hollywood system. Now, a lot of the people would go on to work in Hollywood, but he would always remain independent. And that was kind of his goal, is he never really wanted to work in the studio system. He bounced back and forth a couple, and he started, of course, in the studio system. But he figured there was more money to be made being an independent director and, of course, more artistic control. People who worked for his companies often found it easier to rise from minor crew work to directing since he always wanted to promote talent. He always made a profit on all his films. He directed 39 films and produced 179, and he never lost money on any of them. Uh, even one, uh, the fan, uh, Fantastic Four movie that was never produced, he still made millions of dollars, even on a film that was actually not even released. So he knew how to make money. Today, he's primarily working with Sci-Fi Channel and a lot of the popular movies there he is producing or as some part of. So just a couple notable people that started to work for him, Francis Ford Coppola, Ron Howard, Martin Scorsese, Jonathan Demme, uh, John Sayles, James Cameron, a lot of people who are actually in the Hollywood system themselves started with Roger Corman. And they gave, he always made sure he gave them, again, you know, talent, and they, they always respect him. And that's what's very interesting about Roger Corman as a movie maker, even though he's always been pretty much independent. And even though he's made a lot of goofy movies over the years, he's always well respected in terms of craft and he's won many awards because some of the films that were more kind of um, story oriented or character oriented and not so much just um, the kind of exploitation oriented, you know, are well respected films. Uh, he's also helped to launch the careers of actors like Peter Fonda, Jack Nicholson, Dennis Hopper, uh, Bruce Dern, Sylvester Stallone, Diane Ladd, and William Shatner. So, you know, again, a lot of famous people, you know, came through his ranks. And so he's very important. A couple of his just kind of, you know, if you're very interested in him or you really love independent movies, you know, he's one of the people to start. He, um, it's called The Poe Cycle. There's about, um, I think it's seven uh, Poe adaptations that he made, and they were critical as well as commercial successes. Um, some of them are comedy. Some of them are straight up horror. Um, some of them are just straight up drama, but they were well respected and, you know, uh, won awards and so forth. He also always liked to push the boundaries, you know, when punk rock music was becoming even just a slight beyond um, the kind of fringe, you know, underground. He immediately saw an opportunity there to make it more mainstream, to make it more pop culture. And uh, Rock and Roll High School was uh, very successful for the time. And, you know, even though it didn't... Um, make uh, the Ramones into movie stars. It definitely got them more into mainstream audiences. 
Uh, Death Race 2000, again, directed by Paul Bartel, one of the most influential movies in terms of the 70s because it really launched the um, racing car industry for movies. Uh, you know, Cannonball Run, all these things actually are in some of these, you know, Smoking and Bandit, things that were produced by Hollywood Studios actually owe their um, money to Roger Corman because he made them really popular. And of course, we can't um, disregard his very TNA type movies. You know, he he was very famous for making, um, you know, TNA type movies and uh, the, the Nurse Collection, for example. You know, definitely exploitation genre. So he ran the gambit of well-respected films, pop culture films, campy films, and then of course exploitation films. Right. So you know, there's definitely, um, and of course, that's one of the reasons why he was very successful as an independent director and producers because he he ran the gambit of all sorts of cinema right even when it's not as respected as his others they still made a lot of money so again you know the roger corman is just a very kind of influential figure within the kind of independent cinema in america and he's definitely if you're interested in american cinema really important person to look at obviously if you have any questions always post to the canvas forum if not again just good luck with the rest of the semester and take care